Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. Oh, 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 oh. I'm Z Garcia. Hi. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Mike Felicio. Welcome to our series that we're doing in November to prepare you for the Christmas shopping season of buying gifts for other people. I buy gifts for my quite large family, and every year, one of the hardest things is filling those stockings, and my kids tend to buy giant stockings, but <laughs> finding stuff that fits in them. So that's well, what this is. My family, uh, just to tell you a little about myself, we would use festive pillowcases as our stockings. <laughs> so for the purposes of my lists, I just chose games that could fit inside of a festive pillowcase. Solid save. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. All righty. Well, that's what this is. These are smaller games. They may not all exactly fit into a stocking, but they fit into someone's stocking somewhere. <laughs> or, a, or a pillowcase. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think we're starting from the smallest one of all with Mike. Okay, so I'm starting off this stocking stuffer list with, I believe, the smallest actual package of any of them, and this is Sprawlopolis. This is coming from a series of games known as the Wallet uh, Games, because really, these literally can fit in a wallet, and it's a, just a card game. I believe it's 18 cards all told, and in Sprawlopolis, uh, there are two-sided cards. On one side of the card is going to be part of a grid that's going to be played out to make a city going to have different types of uh, quadrants and roads and on the backs of them are going to be scoring conditions and so what you're trying to do is you looking at those scoring conditions play out your cards in such a way that you can get the number of points that you need to be considered to be successful very very quick to play very simple uh, but a real challenge and a nice little package in a very small container that is sprawlopolis my first tiny pick here is a game that unfortunately I think has been somewhat overlooked. It's a game called Abyss Conspiracy. The game's called Conspiracy. It's in the Abyss universe, okay? And much like it's a bigger, older brother, this is gorgeous. And it's a nice, simple card drafting game in which you are trying to build sets, trying to have the most pearls, and trying to have the most points. It comes in a tiny little tin box. It comes with a bunch of different covers for that tin, so get the color you like. And it's so fun. Quick, enjoyable, scales well, down to two players, up to the max. I really like this one. You you got to get this thing. I think you're gonna really going gonna to like it. So, Abyss Conspiracy. Man, that sounds good, Z. I'm going to have to try that one out for sure. Uh, I'm going to talk about a game here that I wouldn't mind seeing the actual physical product of this in my stocking, and that's Pop-Tarts the Game. Now, everyone who likes Pop-Tarts is going to want to get this game because it looks like a box of Pop-Tarts. But what this is is a game in which you are trying to collect a certain number of Pop-Tarts. These Pop-Tarts are coming down a line, and you are collecting various flavors of Pop-Tarts. They have the most popular ones in this game to turn them in to score goal cards. It's a really simple game. In fact, I considered putting this on our family game list, but this is a game that whether you might be interested in it or if you want to give it to a family who doesn't play many board games, they're going to be able to easily jump into this one. It's really simple, and yet, I mean, you're collecting Pop-Tarts, so that's a lot of fun. And there's a bit of uh, which Pop-Tart am I going to take? You're manipulating the line of Pop-Tarts to take the one that you need. So it offers a few choices. It works great with kids and with adults. And it's one that you can pull out and play in a fairly short amount of time. And like everything else on this list, fits inside a stocking. So that's Pop-Tarts the game, almost as good as the real thing. All this talk about Pop-Tarts is going to make me hungry. But my next one is The Crew. This is a cooperative trick-taking game. So if you have someone who's a fan of trick-taking, this is a tiny little box that would fit great into a stocking, and you can throw it in there. But this also works with anybody who's a fan of cooperative games. It's a very simple card game where you're trying to make the right person take the different tricks. And it's very strategic in the way it plays but it's also very simple to kind of get into. Um, and the difficulty level can kind of be different depending on who you're playing with, how experienced they are with making sure the trick goes in the right place. This goes all the way up to like 50 different levels, so it starts off really easy, and you can just keep playing the game over and over as it gets more and more difficult. So that is The Crew. The Crew is a really good choice there. It's one of the most popular games that's come out in the last little bit, so I think that's a really great choice. For my second choice, I'm going to be going with Love Letter Infinity Gauntlet. This is 
the latest in a series of love letter games, which are really just a small box card game where essentially you're going to have a couple of cards in hand. You're going to play a card and draw a card. This one changes up the formula a little bit from the other love letter games in that one player is playing as Thanos and they're trying to fulfill a particular goal of getting their infinity stones out and the other players are trying to defeat Thanos, but it really still uses that kind of familiar love letter pattern. Love letter is a series of games that has been out for a number of years. It's been very popular, a great small box card game. And this one is a really nice twist to the formula. So if you have somebody that is a Marvel fan and potentially even if they've played another Love Letter game, this is a great choice. This is Love Letter Infinity Gauntlet. All right, my second pick is a little push your luck dice and card game called appropriately enough Push. In this one, you are going to be flipping cards over from a deck, assigning them to one of three piles on the table, making sure that no pile has the same number or the same color show up in it. If at any point you flip over a card and can't put it anywhere because you break that rule, you bust and you roll a bad die and other players take these piles you've been building. If you willingly stop, you can take one of these piles, and then of the possibly two other piles left, the other players will take those. And then you score points for the stuff you took, that's it. But every now and then you have to bank some cards, because if you push your luck and you have to roll that bad die, you might lose stuff. So every now and then you have to just skip a turn, bank some points. I really like it. Quick, extremely quick. Uh, easy to learn while you're playing. Like, you can start this game immediately, you know, because you don't have to sit down and learn the rules. I really like it. I recommend it. Push. Check it out. This next game sounds like it's actually a Christmas game, silver and gold, but it's actually a pirate game. Although, do pirates celebrate Christmas? It doesn't matter. Um, in this game, you are flipping cards over that show various shapes, like Tetris, and you are going to fill them in. You have these little cards, island cards, and you're trying to fill in as much of the island, fill in the whole island as, as quickly as you can so that you can discard that card and draw another card. And as you fill these cards up, they're worth points. Cards that need more spaces are worth more points. And then there's a few other things about treasure and palm trees and things like that. Very simple, and yet even I found that people who like very advanced strategy games also enjoy this one, and people who hardly ever play games really like it. This is what we call the flip and write, where you flip a card and write things. If you've ever played Yahtzee, where you roll dice and write numbers down, it's kind of in that same genre. And this one just is so easy and so simple to play, and yet feels very satisfying as you fill in these shapes and you complete the island. I don't know that it's very piratey in theme, but who cares, because everyone at the table is going to really enjoy it. That's silver and gold. My next one here is a great dexterity game, and that is Rhino Hero. You basically have this Uno-like card mechanic as you're playing out different floors and affecting different things. Maybe you could have the next player have to move the Rhino, or maybe different things could happen where they have to draw another card, and you're trying to build this tower out without the tower falling. If the tower falls, you're gonna lose the game, and the player who had the least amount of cards in their hand is gonna win, but you're trying to stack it up higher and higher and higher. And this game can get super exciting as the tower gets so, so high, everyone's holding their breath, trying to see how high the tower can get, but also trying to get all the cards out of their hand and maybe mess up the next person by making them move that Rhino even higher. So that is Rhino Hero, a great stocking stuffer game. All right, we're going from rhinos to dinosaurs. My final choice on the stocking stuffer list is maybe pushing it a little bit. If you had a large enough stocking, it's still a small box game. This is Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. If you have somebody on your list that likes Jurassic Park or just likes dinosaurs or just likes a fun, package in a small box, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs is a really good choice. You're placing out workers, you're trying to create a dinosaur park where you are collecting uh, unique dinosaurs, hopefully because those are going to be the ones that get you the most points, but you have to make sure that you have your enclosures all set or the dinosaurs can escape and cause problems. It's a really, really fun game. It's the latest in a whole series of what are known as the Tiny Epic Games. Uh, there's been a number of different types of themes, but dinosaurs is a great theme and it's one that I think has a wide appeal. So if you know somebody that likes dinosaurs, give a look at Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. My final pick here is a little game from Osprey Games called Village Green, in which you are building, you're gonna be drafting some cards and building a little pattern, a little grid in front of you and you score based on what's in each column in each row. There's sort of a, a card that you'll place there on the outside at the top of the columns on the sides of the rows that say, okay, you're going to score for this kind of flower. You're going to score for this many of uh, buildings, what have you. 
And then, so you have to you have to be careful because you have to satisfy both a column for every card and a row for every card. It's engaging. It's it's a bigger game than the box would lead you to believe, and I love that. Plus, it's very very pretty. So Village Green is a good one. I recommend it. Perhaps again, much like Abyss, not getting a lot of attention, and I think it should. It's a it's a very engaging little game. Beautiful to just give as a gift to someone who loves the outdoors. Um, Throw it down on the table just about anywhere and have a good time with it. That is Village Green. The last game I'm talking about on this list is Ohanami. This is a really pretty little game that is just about collecting cards and putting them in front of you. This game uses what we call drafting. That's where you have a hand of cards and you will draft. Take a couple of those cards and then pass the rest to your neighbor. And so I'm constantly thinking, I don't want to give this good card to my neighbor, but also which of these cards do I want to keep? Once you take the cards, you will put them in front of yourself in three columns. So you're placing the cards in front of you and trying to put them in ascending and descending order. Uh, if you've ever played Racco, it's a little bit like that. Just trying to put these cards in the right order. But also the color of the cards is going to score you points. Some cards score you points the whole game. Some cards only score you points at the very end. And it's up to you to try to figure out which ones you're going to collect. So you're thinking about the numbers so that you can put them in ascending and descending order. Uh, and you're also thinking about how many points they're going to score you. But you're also thinking about how simple and fun these choices are. This is a game that I've yet to play once at a session. We play it, and then we're like, let's play it again. It's, again, a really easy one to teach new people. This is the kind of game I can give folks, and they don't even need me at all to play it. They can read the instructions. Really simple. A great gift. That's Ohanami. Recommend it by myself. The next one here is for that family member that loves puzzles. This is Unlock and Exit Game. So there are tons of amazing exit games that you can fit into a stocking and the fact that a lot of these games are only one time playable with the exit game means that people that have already played several of these games will be excited to get more because they want to try out the ones they haven't tried yet and they're constantly releasing new ones of these you're going through all these different puzzles trying to solve them um, and then the unlock games there's a lot of different ones that can fit in stockings as well and they're just exciting to play the unlock ones use an app to play as well but it adds like different ambiance of music and things like that and different puzzles um, that you have to find on the table so if you like to cooperatively try to figure out these puzzles, exit and unlock games are a great stocking stuffer. Alrighty. Well, that's a lot of small games, but a lot of really good small games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good games on this list. I think that this is, this shows you that you can pack a lot of experience into a small package. Right. And these games are worth getting. It doesn't matter about the size. These right. could mm -hmm. be put under the tree too. They're just really quality games. Yeah, yeah, it's always well, awesome when something charming about. Go ahead, go ahead, Rick. I was gonna say it's always awesome when normally stockings in my family are filled with candy and things like that. But if you have a game pop out of there as well, it's always like, oh, cool, let's get this to the table. So it's always awesome to have like that extra thing you can put in a stocking as well. Right, right. It's just charming. I was gonna say it's just nice and charming to give somebody a little, a little game. Mm -hmm. It, it, one of those sweet thinking of you type things. Right. Well, there you go, folks. We tried to pick games that hopefully are in print or you can find right now. Check out the rest of our lists. We're putting them up all week long. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun putting stuff in pillowcases. <laughs>